I'm really glad to um, be here to share with you um, all of the things that we've found with our new AccuFill quilting kit. My name is Nancy Fiedler, and I'm a Genome Educational Coordinator, and um, I've been playing with the uh, new program, and I hope you're going to love it as much as I do. The kit itself comes in a, is packaged um, with this front cover, and the MSRP is $499. You'll notice on the front cover there is a QR code. This is going to take you right to the AccuFill landing page where they'll be able to view um, video content on how to use the AccuFill tool. These pages are going to be available soon, so keep an eye out for an email from the marketing, de marketing department for the launch date of that uh, website. In the kit, you're going to find our new ASQ22 hoop, which is designed to hold the layers in your quilt sandwich securely with using the um, eight magnetic clamps. Also, the Krill acrylic template is included to help secure uh, place the fabric correctly in the hoop. Also, we're going to get the installation CD, which installs the AccuFill tool on your computer. This program is designed to help you uh, plan multiple design layout, print templates, there are quilting designs included, plus the calculation functions so that you can plan an all-over layout for any size quilt. The design collection has over 70 embroidery uh, quilting designs with it. Some can be used alone. You can combine them. There are stippling designs, feather, free motion style, all sorts of designs created for your quilting pleasure. In order to use the AccuFill quilting kit, the MemoryCraft 12000 needs to be updated to version 1.10. As certified MemoryCraft 12,000 dealers, you should have received a CD from the marketing department that has the update for the MemoryCraft 12,000 as well as an update for Horizon Link. We encourage you to invite your current MemoryCraft 12,000 customers into the store and do the update for them. The update will be available on the uh, Genomi website July 1st. I'm just going to ask a little question, and uh, if you cannot hear me, make sure and uh, send a little chat so we can make adjustments. Now I want to go over some of the new improvements and modifications uh, from the update. In the set function, we have a choice now where you can change the background from black to white. The bobbin thread sensor has been improved. It's more precise, and we've even added a new offsetting because sometimes we like to use the um, bobbin thread all the way to the end. There have been improvements made in the sewing applications. When you select free quilting or variable zigzag, you now can adjust the height of the foot right from the screen. Also, in free motion quilting, we have added a feed dog up application. Then, in the ordinary um, stitches in sewing applications, we have also added the back to start key. The straight stitch needle plate can now be used with straight stitches in sewing applications.
in the embroidery mode, we've added two new hoops. When you go to the edit function, you will be able to access the ASQ22, our new AccuFill quilting hoop, plus a new hoop to come soon, the HH10 or flat hat hoop. Once again, watch for an email from the marketing department when that will be available. There is also a new detailed information that you can access when you are locating designs that you have saved in the machine or on a USB stick. When you select the bottom tab that shows the four little squares, it's the yellow highlighted tab on the screen that you see now, when you select a design, or when it displays the designs, you will see Jeff Plus, JPX format, the Jeff format, or the AccuFill format. So you will be able to see more information about the designs. That way you can select the correct design. In the quilting designs, when you select 24 designs with the stippling, you will now get a pop-up window that, that lets you select the motif only, motif and stippling, or the motif stippling and the frame. There have been improvements made to the jump thread trimming. The presser foot in embroidery mode is in a fixed motion and sometimes the thread tends to stick to the foot. Now after the jump thread has been cut, when it starts the new color, the foot will make three little hops to help loosen the thread. Also, when you touch the adjust key, we now have the choice to change the length of the jump thread and adjust the foot height because these also will can be slightly different from design to design with different threads, fabrics, and stabilizers. And these are all, of, um, uh, you can access all of these by touching the Just button from the Ready to Sew screen. Now, when you select an embroidery design, a hoop confirmation window will appear to remind you which hoop you should be using. The function can be controlled. You can turn it off in the set mode. Now let's talk about the functions in our AccuFill tool program. There are five functions in the program. The first one is called AccuFill Multiple Design Layout. When you choose this, it will calculate the number of hoopings to fill a defined area with the all-over AccuFill stippling design. When you use Create Original AccuFill Design, this one once again will calculate and resize the designs for a defined area, but you can use other mo quilting motifs in the Jeff, Jeff Plus, or JPX format. Edit Designs allows you to define the motif size and create a motif or to use the motif for a single hooping. Multiple Setting is a tool that adjusts the width and height of a, of a motif to fill, a once again, another defined area. And my favorite, Adjust Last Pattern. This tool allows you to adjust that final motif because sometimes we've experienced uh, sh shifting of the fabric and it shrinks and that last design never quite fit. Why do I need AccuFill? Well, it's a complete quilting system built directly into the embroidery machine. It's like having a long arm without having to use up all that space. It's easier and more accurate than free motion quilting. It's the perfect solution for people who I like to say are stippling challenged. And with the new layout and calculator functions, it's very easy to plan the project 
and adjust it as we work through the quilt top. AccuFill includes over 70 quilting motifs that are beautiful and versatile. You can use them for all types of projects. The improvements over the original AccuFill. The best one is we can use it on the computer. The computer-aided design makes the program so simple to use, and it's so easy to use it in a variety of different ways. There's enhanced calculation functions. It allows you to adjust the template as we work through the quilt. And it's a great feature, especially when we're getting towards that last row or that very last design. Today, we're going to learn how to use the AccuFill tool and then be able to use these designs to create a sample to display in your store. So now I'm going to get started and I'm going to open my AccuFill tool. When you open your screen, you will see those five functions we talked about. And the first one is AccuFill Multiple Design Layout. When you first install the program, you may want to go to the Setup. And under Setup, it says Unit. From here, you can choose whether you want to work in millimeter or inches. For today, I'm going to work in inches, so I'm going to put a check mark there. You can uh, uh, connect the Memorycraft 12000 to the computer or insert a USB jump drive because we'll be able to write to either the machine or a, a jump drive. I'm going to open my AccuFill multiple design layout to start. With this design layout, you can tell it what size area you want to work with. So when you select it, a pop-up window appears, and it shows me the parameters I can work in. I can choose from 3.94 inches to 129.92 inches for both the width and the length. So I can plan small to a really large project, a king-size quilt if I wanted. For today's project, The center, which was the light green area in the photo, was 21 inches. So we're going to type in 21 on the width and 21 on the length. I'm going to click OK. And the screen shows my layout. On the bottom of the screen, it shows me the original size. Then it shows me the size that the stippling is going to cover. So here, in this case, it says 20.91 inches by 20.91 inches. Three hoopings across and three hoopings down. The next one shows me that the actual hoop is going to stitch out 6.97 inches square. On my screen, after I've decided that that's the correct layout, I'm going to click the green arrow that says Next. Instantly, it shows me this is my stippling in one hoop. It was that fast. Now, I would like a template for my placement. I'm going to go to File. And I'm going to go into Print Preview. In Print Preview, I get a full-size template with my crosshair and the layout. You can toggle between one page and two pages just by clicking the little toggle button on the top of the screen. Now I'm going to just click Close. And I'm ready to write the design. On my 
toolbars in the center. There's an icon that shows the sewing machine and a jump drive, and it's called Write a Design. When I click Write a Design, the pop-up window appears. If I'm connected to the machine, it shows me built-in plus the two USB jump drive icons and also the jump drive in my computer. We're going to click on the file that I want to send it to. In this case, I want to send it to the machine. I'm going to open built-in and my embroidery EMBF folder. I want to rename this. I'm going to click on Rename and type in Stipple. And I'm going to name this Stipple 1 and click OK. Now you'll notice it's automatically saving it as a JPX. Any file that you send to the machine from the AccuFill tool is sent in the JPX format. Down in the bottom left corner, there's a little check mark where it says switch the machine ready to sew. So if I want to just sew it right away, I could put that check mark there. If I turn off the check, it will just save it into the machine. I'm going to leave the check mark there for now. And I'm going to click the little red arrow to send the design to the machine. It was that simple. Now, the next thing I would like to do is I want to save this design in my computer. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and from here it lets you save the design any place that you want in your computer. For today, I'm going to save it on the desktop so I can find it easily. I'm going to name it Stipple 1 again, and notice it saves it only as a JPX from AccuFill tool. I'm going to click Save. So it's very simple. One click to print, one click to write, one click to save. In my project, I decided I wanted to add a little bit of interest in the center of the 21 inch square. And this center, I want it to be the same size as all of my other stippling. Once again, this is very simple to do. On my toolbar, the second tool from the left says Clear Design. When I click on it, it took the design out of the area However, it did not change my embroidery area. Now I want to add a new quilting motif. I want everybody to um, make sure they understand the difference between open and import. Open would be when I want to open a AccuFill design that I've already created. Import lets me bring JPX, Jeff, and JIF Plus designs into my AccuFill program. So I'm going to click on Import Design. And you notice it at the bottom of Files of Type, it only will look for Jeff, Jeff Plus, and JPX. When you install the program, you get 70 designs. Those designs are automatically installed on the C drive, program files, in the Genomic folder, in the AccuFill tool folder, and a file called Design Collection. In the Design Collection, I have four new files, the AccuFill designs, and this is where the program is getting the stipples. Quilting designs, stippling, and stippling parts. For the design I want to create today, I'm going to go to stippling designs. 
and the design I chose to use was number 23 underscore 1. And I'm going to click Open. It automatically brought the design into the center of my hoop. When I click on it, the resizing handles appear. Or if I want a more accurate way of resizing the design, if I go to Edit and click on Resize, I get a window where I can use the little arrows to resize or use the slide. For today, I want to change the size of this down to 90%, and I'm going to click OK. On the top, you'll notice there are some icons that you recognize from Horizon Link. We have Vertical Mirror, Horizontal Mirror, and Rotate. So let's rotate the design so it's standing on point. Now, I'd like to add another motif. I'm going to go back to Import Design, and I want to change my folders. From the stippling designs, I'm going to go up one level, and I'm going to open Quilting Designs. You can click on the design, and then you can even use the arrows on your keyboard to scroll through them one by one to find the design that you want. For today, I want to use Quilting Design 04. I'm going to click Open. The design opened directly in the middle of the screen. I'm going to drag it and put it in the upper left-hand corner. As I look at this design, I can see that there's multiple colors, and I want to be able to quilt this without having to stop. I'm going to come back to my first design and select it. I'm going to go to Edit and Colors. You'll recognize this window from Horizon Link. This particular design is done in three layers, each layer being a color. I want them all one, so I'm going to select layer one, and for day, today, bright green. Then I'm going to assign the color by clicking on the red arrow, and the flower turned green in the preview window. Now I'm going to select layer two. I want the same bright green and assign this color. Layer 3, bright green, assign the color. Then when I click OK, it all turned green in my window. Now I'm going to select the other motif, edit, Colors, bright green, and assign it. And now it's also green. The selection box is around the second little flower, and I would like to put them in the corners. There's a new icon, which you will now find in Horizon Link when you update it, and it's called Corner. When I click on it, it puts them in the corners correctly. Also, there is a new centering button. So if I wanted to move something in the center of my hoop, I could just click that. There is also a new sewing order button. When I click on that, it would allow me to click on the designs, the individual designs in the order that I want to sew them. Once I have my design, how I like it, I'm going to click the Next button, so the green arrow, and it shows me this is what's going to sew in my hoop. I would want to make a new template, so I'd click File, Print Preview, 
and once again, here it shows me my design. In this case, I probably wouldn't print the second page because I already know it's going to fit in the, in the original layout. I'm going to click Write a Design. It automatically knows that I want to send it to the EMBF folder in my machine. I'm going to click Rename. I'm going to call this one Center and OK it. And I'm going to click the red arrow to write it to the machine. Now, a pop-up window appeared. What it's telling me that there's on the machine, there is a, a message. And when I look at the machine, I get that little window telling me that I needed to use the ASQ22 hoop. I simply have to turn off that little message on the screen, and then I'll be able to write it. Now I'm going to go to File. Save as. I want to go back to my desktop and I want to save this as Center 1. Now, let's do something new. So I'm going to click on the new icon, which is in the top bar, and it takes me back to my home page. I'm going to click on Create Original AccuFill Designs. This is great to plan a project for a whole quilt top, borders, or even sashes. Once again, I get the pop-up window that wants to know how large an area I'm working with. In this case, What I want to do is on my project, I wanted to plan a border. So this is 21 inches, and my border, I wanted a 4-inch border. So the width is still 21, but the height is 4 inches for our border. And I'm going to click OK. And the screen, of course, changed. At the bottom, I have my information, 20.91 inches wide by 4.02 inches tall. Three hoopings across, and the design size is 6.97 inches by 4.02. I'm going to click the next arrow, and here shows me the design area that I'm going to choose a design to put into. I'm going to click on Import Design. I'm going to stay in the Quilting Designs folder, and I'm going to select Design 6 and open it. It brought the design directly into the center. I'm just going to drag it and put it in the lower left corner. I want to copy this design, so I'm going to just click Copy and Paste. The second design appeared on top of the first one, so I'm going to move it to the upper right-hand corner, and I'm going to use my horizontal mirror to flip it. Once I have my designs in my hoop where I want them. I'm going to click Next. I can go to File, Print Preview. Once again, here's my template and the layout. Write a design. This time I'm going to turn off the switch machine ready to sew because I just want to write the design to the file. I'm going to rename this as border and write. Since I want to save this, 
once again, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and on my desktop, save my border. Now I have my borders and I have my center, but that left some little corners that I didn't have a design yet. So we're going to go to New and Edit Designs. When I open Edit Designs, I have the little pop-up window, but if you'll take a, a close look, you'll see that now the area is 3.94 inches by 8.66. I'm only going to plan something for a hoop, not a whole layout. My corner stones for the little project we're working on is 4 inches square. So I'm going to put in 4 by 4. I could use the resizing handles to drag the uh, embroider design area if I wanted to. The most accurate way really is to go to setup if I want to change it go to editing size and change the size uh, entering in the numbers. Now I want to bring in a design. We're going to go to import and I'm going to go up one level from the quilting designs and open the stippling designs again. I'm going to scroll down and this time I want stippling design 23 underscore 3, which is just the single motif of the flower that we used in the center of the project. I'm going to select the design and resize it to the maximum size for the design area. I can click Next, File, Print Preview. This time, since it's just a single design, it will print a template of the motif only without a layout. I'm going to write the design, rename it Corner, and write File, Save As, and once again on my desktop, I'm going to save my corner. Now, let's try something new. I'm going to go to New, and once again it brought me back to the design page. I'm going to select uh, multiple setting. You notice this time it took me to an open file. There are times when I have an AccuFill that I've already created and I want to use it again but in a different size. Perhaps I was making two quilts, identical quilts for my grandchildren, but after I sewed them together, put on my borders and did all of my basting, one ended up a slightly different size. So this lets me change the, accu the calculation. So I'm going to select Stipple 1, the original project that we did, and click Open. And it brings me back to all of the original information. When I've remeasured my project, I'm going to write in the new, or type in the new settings. So for today, we're going to say that the new quilt is 22 inches wide by 25 inches high. And I'm going to click OK. Once again, I got a pop-up window. Whenever 
there is a gap of 10 millimeters or more, this little pop-up window will appear. And it's telling me that with the new calculation, I'm going to be about a half inch short in width of stippling and 0.12 inches in height without stippling in the area that I defined. If I didn't like that, I could say no and enter in new numbers. But in this case, I would think, well, a half inch on the height or on the width and a little bit on the height, I probably could fudge that and it wouldn't really show because it's an all over stipple design. So I'm going to say yes. Notice how it changed the layout. The layout is now three hoopings wide by four hoopings high. The size of the hoop, the hooping has changed to 7.17 inches by 6.22 inches. When I click Next, I can see I have a new template. So of course I would print a new one and write the design. Now let's go to New and explore my favorite new function, Adjust Last Pattern Size. When I click Adjust Last Pattern Size, once again it takes me to, or it's looking for an AccuFill JPX file. So on our project today, it was Stipple 1. And I'm going to click Open. When I quilted the center of my project, when I got to the last square, my template was larger than the square it was. So I took my ruler and measured it. When I measured it, the height was the same, but the width was about a quarter inch smaller. So I'm going to type in 6.75 on my width. I'm going to leave the height the same. and I'm going to click OK. It automatically resized the design to the size I need to fill that very last spot. I would go to File, Print, print my new template, send the new design to my machine, and I can successfully quilt that last area. This is how simple it is to plan your quilting project with the AccuFill tool. Now, let me show you how I actually finished my project. In order to sew the project, of course, we have to have our MemoryCraft 12,000 and the AccuFill toolkit. I used the O foot, the P foot, the AccuFeed single prong attachment with the VD foot, the quilt binding attachment, and of course, extra bobbins. There was a 21 and a half inch square of the light green cotton for the center. For my borders, I used two six and a half by 21 and a half inch strips and two six and a half by 33 and a half inch strips. You notice that I cut the strips at least two inches wider than I wanted that final border, so I knew I had plenty of fabric to go in my hoop for the quilting process. I had a 30 inch square of batting and backing. I cut four two inch by the width of the fabric, strips of fabric from my binding. I used a neutral color all-purpose thread to sew it together. I used the artistic kimono thread for quilting, and I used the Janome polyester embroidery thread in the bobbin so the back was as pretty as the front. I also used the Jenny Haskins template magic to print my templates on. The quilt binder attachment is available, and the MSRP is $244. In July, there will be a new binder attachment for the MemoryCraft 12,000. Watch for information from the, merch, or the marketing department uh, on this new attachment. Jenny Haskins Template Magic comes in a package with 20 sheets for $22.90. The template magic allows you to 
print your template on the paper and it peels off and it will stick to the fabric. I love this product because I don't have to put any chalk marks or fabric marker markings on my uh, fabric. And the template will use over and over. You can use it for an entire quilt. The Genomi polyester thread is available in three assortments and there's 26 colors in each assortment. The artistic metallic thread is wonderful thread. It comes in 1,000 yard spools and it's made in Japan. There's regular metallics, specialty metallics, and spritz away and wash away threads, which are great for basting your quilt together and then just washing it out. Before you want to start your project, you want to print out your templates. So I've printed a template of the stippling, the center, the border, and the corners, all on my Jenny Haskins template magic. To construct it, it's very simple. On the Memory Craft 12,000, you're going to select the decorative stitch tab, select the quilting, and select stitch 2. Attach the O foot and sew the dark green borders to the center. Also at this time I like to sew my binding strips together so they're ready to go when my project is done. Baste the backing, batting, and top together to create your quilt sandwich. When you select the uh, embroidery function to um, open the machine, then touch set and go to the embroidery tab. On the first page, we have one stitch stop. You want to turn this on so that the machine will take one stitch at the beginning of each stipple so that you can pull the bobbin thread to the top. Touch OK and the setting will uh, take place. When you open the stipple one design, in the ready to sew screen, you will see there is a new icon. This is a turnover key and it allows you to rotate the design 180 degrees. This is great because if you are working on a really large project, sometimes it's easier to rotate the fabric in the hoop than to try and get all the fabric up under the arm. This is the only editing that you can do in the machine. Anytime you need to edit an AccuFill design, you need to go back to the program in the computer. Also, on the Adjust button, when you touch that, we now can adjust the height of the presser foot. This may be necessary if you have multiple seams to sew over or to accommodate thicker batting types. And we have the new jump th uh, thread tail uh, length that could be adjusted here. I recommend not turning on the jump thread cutter when I'm quilting to avoid the little thread nests that appear on the back. You'll cut the template to size and peel off the backing. And as in the photograph, you'll see I'll position my template for the, in the first area to be quilted in the light green center area. Place your quilt sandwich in the ASQ hoop and use the acrylic template to seat it and attach your uh, magnetic clamps. I use the artistic kimono thread in my needle and the polyester, Janome polyester thread on my bobbin. So you continue quilting across the width of the quilt and I started my second row. When I got to the center, I opened the center JPX, used my template to line it up and quilted 
the middle. Then went back to my stippling design to finish my quilting. As I said before, when I got to that very last section, my template was larger. So I measured it, used the edit function, and changed the design size so I could get perfect placement. Then on my borders, I drew a center line two inches from the light green area because I wanted it centered for a four inch border. Then when I uh, opened my border JPX and used the template for placement. As you can see in the picture, I lined up the vertical placement line with the template, but my horizontal line ended up somewhat below the center line of the hoop. But I simply used my jog keys on the machine to position the needle into the center, peeled off my template, and quilted. Finally, I opened the corners and sewed a corner motif in each one of the corners. When all of my quilting was completed, I squared up my quilt so that the borders measured four and a half inches from that inner border seam. I attached my AccuFeed single prong foot and did a multiple zigzag to compress the edges. And finally, I used my quilt binding attachment to sew the binding to the quilt. I hope you enjoyed learning about our new AccuFill tool kit and are able to use these patterns to make a sample to hang in your stores. Thank you so much for attending today. I've got a question about adjusting the foot height. When you're in the ready to sew screen and you select the adjust key, the third setting shows the foot height. The default height is 2.2. By choosing the minus, you can bring the foot closer to the fabric, or by the plus, raise it up. I was quilting on a project that had several pieces at an intersection, and the foot wanted to stick on that, so I raised the height up. If you're just working on a single layer of cotton and a piece of stabilizer, if the fabric is wanting to bounce a little bit, you could bring the foot to a lower position by touching the minus. The icon that shows the scissors with the flower, this is where you would change the length of the thread tail when the jump thread cutter is activated. Minus will make it shorter, plus will make it longer. In some cases, if you want to change the design size, depending on which portion of the AccuFill tool you're in, you can change the size of, of just the design. But keep in mind, AccuFill, you can only increase or decrease the size of a design by 10%.
you would be able to do this in edit designs because I can leave the hoop the full size, go to import design, and I can change the size of the design without changing the size of the block. And after I've adjusted my size, I could then even come in and change the block size. Someone asked if you can create, create your own quilt patterns in the software. The software requires you to have a .jeff, Jeff plus, so you can create your own quilt motifs in Digitizer and then bring them into the program to plan your layout, whether it's a large project, borders, sashes, or a single hooping. We have another question about using Horizon Link to view the AccuFill designs. So I will quickly open Horizon Link. Go to View to Embroidery. And look at my machine here. And there they are. So the answer is yes. I have successfully been able to create miters using the binder tool. Simply sew to the corner with the binder attachment and stop about a quarter inch from the end and cut the threads. If you pull the fabric to the back and hand form the, the miter just like you do when you're making any mitered corner. I like to use a quilt tacking gun and tack those corners in place. Then pull the binding back through the binder and get that corner under the foot 
and then just resume sewing. It takes a little practice, but after about four placemats, you'll have your corners perfected.